We've just come down from a mini solar storm and it looks like there might be another on the way. And there's a massive sunspot that is in the Earth strike zone right now and it's even fired off a couple big flares. Those stories are more in the news this week. The sun's activity has really picked up this week. We had just calmed down from a mini solar storm from a coronal hole that's now rotated to the sun's backside. When all our focus switched to region 2665, it came on the sun's east limb like gangbusters. I mean, this region is massive, which is kind of surprising considering we're nearing solar minimum. And just as it began to rotate into the Earth's strike zone, BAM! It lets off an M-class flare. This gave amateur radio operators some issues with a radio blackout, especially on 20 and 40 meters. And then things began to quiet down. But wait for it. BAM! Right there! Do you see that? On the 14th, it launched a massive solar storm. This one plus another one before it is both headed towards Earth. It looks like it might hit us right around the start of the 17th, and it's sure to bring us some aurora. Switching to your M-flare threat meter, you can see things were quiet for quite some time and then the solar flux began to rise. That's when region 2665 came into view and then BAM on the 9th, you can see there's that first M-class flare that caused a short radio blackout for you amateur radio operators and then things got a little bit quieter, we had some C-class flares and then BAM on the 14th, there's that massive M2.4 flare, it's a long duration flare, that's when that big solar storm was launched but it caused some uh, a huge radio blackout for hours on the amateur radio bands. It also caused some GPS issues, no doubt. And then things have calmed down just a little bit since then, but expect to have more issues as long as this region is in view. Switching to our solar radiation storm conditions, we are experiencing an S1 radiation storm right now that's associated with that launch of that solar storm back on the 14th. Now this conditions will probably last through the 17th and maybe even beyond that when that solar storm finally hits us. So you amateur radio operators and GPS operators expect a lot of noise, especially if you're near high latitudes, you will see issues. And for you airline passengers who are high risk uh, for radiation, if you are taking international flights, especially those over the poles, please take this into consideration in your flight plans. Switching to our solar storm conditions, we've been reasonably quiet. Although we did reach storm levels back on the 9th uh, sporadically due to a mini solar storm followed by a pocket of fast wind from that coronal hole I mentioned earlier. But that really didn't last all that long. It gave us a little sporadic aurora, but not too much. And then things have quieted back down, but don't expect this to last. We've had a couple mini solar storms that have been launched, plus two bigger solar storms, and all of that should start hitting us around the 15th, and then the big ones will hit us by the 17th and you better believe we should see some aurora. Now getting back to that solar storm, this is our prediction model Enlil. This is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity, and you can see that massive solar storm being launched. This is from that eruption on the 14th, and you can see that it looks like the east end of this thing is going to hit Earth, uh, expected late on the 16th, early on the 17th. Now there is another smaller storm ahead of this, and this one is definitely going to catch up to it, so that could slow it down, so expect uh, it to hit Earth probably probably on the 17th, but it's going to be like a one-two punch. So we could easily get Aurora down to mid-latitudes and expect the ham radio bands to tank. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that one-two punch of the solar storms, especially the big one that was launched on the 14th. NOAA's anticipating at least major storm conditions at high latitudes by the 17th, and that could continue through midweek. Uh, at mid-latitudes, we're only expecting minor storm conditions, but with easily a 50% chance of a major storm at mid-latitudes. So this means aurora could easily come down to the mid-latitudes and we could see it uh, all over the continental U.S. But it all depends upon whether that magnetic field in the storm is the right direction. And we can't predict that faster than real time. But we will keep you apprised when the storm hits our upstream monitors ahead of Earth. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, all eyes are on region 2665 as it transits the Earth-facing disk. NOAA is giving us about a 20 to 30 percent chance of an M-class flare, which means you amateur radio operators and GPS operators, especially on the day side, you have a continued possibility for radio blackouts. Now, you GPS operators need to be worried more about the dawn-dusk regions because that's when you're more susceptible to errors anyway. The one good thing in all this is that the 
solar flux has increased a bit so we're back kind of in the green region so you amateur radio operators should enjoy better propagation when there's not radio blackouts and solar storms kind of mucking things up but at least enjoy that if you can uh, when conditions are good now switching to our radiation storm conditions you can see we are at the s1 level right now and we will continue to skirt that level easily until that solar storm hits us somewhere around the 16th or the 17th and then things should taper off for us but until region 2665 rotates out of view on the sun's west limb we will still remain at high risk for additional radiation storms so the space weather this week is extremely exciting. Region 2665 has not disappointed us as it's rotated into the Earth strike zone. It's launched a one-two punch for a solar storm that should be hitting us late on the 16th or maybe early on the 17th. So you aurora photographers, you get your shutter fingers ready. We could have aurora clear down to mid-latitudes. Now you amateur radio operators and GPS operators, it's a different story for you. Things aren't looking too good. You've had to deal with radio blackouts and now you have a solar radiation storm on top of that and then you're going to be hit by a, a solar storm on the 16th or 17th so these conditions for propagation uh, are going to look pretty bad for a few days and you GPS operators especially your drone flyers or if you're flying any aircraft at high latitudes uh, expect to have nav and comm issues easily over the next few days so be careful. I'm Tamitha Scove thank you for watching.